Hello everyone, this video is going to be a walkthrough the assets I made for Project Mango, that is the DOM library, the textures, the Gribble kits, it's an asset management video, but I can say I have a complete view and I know how it really works, the whole pipeline and the whole asset management for Project Mango. The people who know best are uh, probably Francesco Siddi, uh, Sebastian Koenig, and then all the other artists who actually worked on the shots file, while I've been working on my libraries. And that's also, well, probably something that will always happen with modelers and texture artists uh, when the project is big, that you create your libraries, your files, and you don't really know the final organization of the assets. This is the second note I want to I wanna point out. That is what I'm explaining to you about how I organized and named and placed things around the scenes and the files it's probably not exactly what you find in the final uh, mango assets because i tried to make it in a way that i could hand over my stuff to the next step in the pipeline and some decisions will be done I still haven't been done it, uh, currently like we had a folder organization of course from the beginning that was um, taken from the previous open movies but some things like what is the maximum size for a file? The DOM library containing all the models and textures should be like less than 200 megabytes. One, between 1 and 200 megabytes for a blend file is already a, a big file that can be maybe a problem. And so I've been doing every, almost everything inside one file, which is just easier to manage and to handle and to pass to someone else. And then at the at current time is being decided whether it will be split in more in more files and reorganized and sh such things but so if this video won't tell you everything about all the asset management for project mango it will tell you something about managing a smaller project like a single scene or how you can set up things and then pass it to other people will give you some idea on how to organize your model and texture and to pass them uh, along the pipeline for a bigger project. So I have this file manager window open here and you can see the base structure of Mango SVN and the production files and of course my stuff goes under models, environments and then there's a folder for the DOM which contains the main file where 95% of the stuff is and the file we're going to look at, which is DOM library. Then there's also in a library folder inside the environments that contains some external linked scenes containing some kits of objects like the tech gribble, the concrete pillars, the wood planks that as soon as they, they were made with the idea that they could be reused in many scenes and also maybe the dome could have a place where you had some wood planks or some concrete pillars and then for the specific shot more dressing is needed and it might go away of matte painting or might be uh, picked some more additional gribble and detailed stuff to put directly into the scene file and then my, the rest of my stuff is in production and textures library. The difference between this texture folder inside Pro library contains tileable, mostly tileable, the grunge maps, metal, wood, the brushes also used to paint that were scanned from, made by hand scratching on metal surfaces. I then scanned them and made them into tileable in Blender that could make a good tutorial too and also into game brushes and so this is this folder pro textures lib contains all the generic reusable tileable uh, textures then in pro inside the model folders there's other textures if we go to pro models and dome textures there's quite a bit of textures in here and these are the textures that are specific to some model to some mesh so the unwraps and most of them are uh, dirt maps, black and white dirt maps. But there's also some custom paint, some custom unwrap and paint, 
and some color just uh, mostly uh, grunge maps but you know typical unwrapped textures so moving on into the dom file the organization inside the dom file is divided first of all into scenes there is one environment library assembly scene which used to be pretty important up to some point in the project because there you assembled the group that was used in all other scenes so this was the main scene of the file then no longer because now uh, to simplify the pipeline the other files the scene files and the various sets built from the DOM library are using directly uh, the groups that compose. So this scene is just a test scene to see that all the groups putting together everything that is in the other scenes, you get the full DOM basically. And this is one special scene. Then the second special scene is the Gribble scene, which contains some kits. And this scene also came later in the project for one reason. There had been some issues with uh, uh, linking. And so at some point it seemed dangerous to link too much outside stuff into the dome and so I made them local and I made a scene made the objects and then each object is grouped so that you can well this is a test scene so this is the actual mesh but it's not group and then here you have some groups in the origin and by making these groups with these prefixes we'll see them later you can then go to any scene and just start adding this kind of gribble like basically like this you either switch it from here from the duplication group or you just you generally basically go yeah, shift a to add something add a group instance and then you try to remember which is the prefix for the kit you want to use a TGK for a tech gribble kit, I want the edge pressure object. So I can then put it here and add it somewhere. So these were the two special things. The assembly, it's actually just a test scene and the gribble, um, the gribble scene containing stuff like the crates crates and various miscellaneous gribble technology pieces another kit a third kit with a design based on some pieces of uh, typically Dutch Amsterdam school design made into more sci-fi elements then some specifically Amsterdam school street furniture some cables and wall racks for cables and the pipe kit for the control center some various pipes now at inside one every scene the organization I followed for the layers you've seen I've been jumping on top and bottom layers and that's what I generally do I keep in the upper row of layers the good stuff the extra stuff that is used somewhere in a render and in the bottom the stuff that is good it's not a trash bin it's uh, these are actually instances of the mesh you find in the groups but that i'm just using locally to test or that might contain the modifiers unapplied so every time i need to update something i go to the original with the modifiers i can tweak it easily and then I apply them, make a copy, copy it to the actual upper layer and group it into a group. This group is what goes actually in some place. And also about layers, I generally go from the first to the last, of course. Only layer 20 I use as a trash bin with stuff that is sort of backup. And then generally in some more complex scene, like let's look at the dome technology. 
you have the first five layers that contain some assemblies already. And the second five layers that contains individual pieces. So let's make an example of a complicated one. Might be, yeah, the computer, the scientist mainframes that are just set dressing to put around the dome to fill up some space behind the scientists. And this one is made as a, what you see here is a mesh. It's directly an object that you can edit. And here is where I go to edit, unwrap, uh, make the material, tweak the model. And it's part of a group that is called uh, Scientist Control Center Mainframe. If this was a simple situation, this would directly be a group you use in the final scene. But there's one step more in this case. Doesn't open, happen always, but in this case, you have this group SCC Mainframe that it's here where you can model it and then you can find one of the first five layers some instances of that model plus other pieces that come from the gribble kit and this is just a very simple mesh and this is from an external gribble kit all of this is part of the SEC mainframe group and then I have four of this group instance as a dupli group, so an empty that links to those meshes. And four instances of this one make, a, make another group that is called Dome Scientist main, Mainframes. And this groups with the prefix Dome means it's what you should load into load linked in another scene to get the Dome environment. So Basically, when someone wants to create the DOM from an, in another file, it would link in the groups. All the groups called DOM are good to import. All the other groups have to be ignored, uh, unless you want a single object and then you want maybe to place a single uh, computer somewhere, you can load the SCC mainframe. But the DOM prefix, it means it's the final stuff for the final assembly of the DOM scene. And in fact, then I would test every time that everything was done correctly and grouped correctly by reassembling the dome in this scene. And here you can find the four mainframes linked in as dome scientist mainframes. Then of course all the other groups. Dome shell base in the lower part of the dome shell, the church, the scientist boat, with all the detail and the gribble, the west facades, the east ones, some Michelin technology pieces scattered around the dome, the canal, and all these groups, the, the, the other difference, important difference between the group containing only one mainframe and these groups you find in here is that all these groups have the origin in the center. So if you want to rebuild the dome, just center the origin, um, the cursor into the origin and add the group with prefix dome and you get everything positioned correctly. If you load the SEC mainframe group, you can instead place it, you have a reasonable uh, origin placed at the base of the mainframe and you can place it everywhere. Now, some examples of actual scenes and uh, the parts of the dome. This is the bridge and roads simulation scene. And you can see there's the church and the control center uh, house. But they are here just as dupli groups, just for reference. When I was, um, one of the last things I did on the dome was uh, optimizing and removing all the unnecessary and hidden debris around the road surface. So I just loaded in a dupli group placed in the in the origin of these two groups that are actually actual meshes in other scenes church south and church house and use them as reference but then i can just delete them and keep working without having to load all the 
dome uh, pieces into one scene, which would be really too heavy for modeling. And well, going through the layers, you can see the base mesh, a layer of broken bricks and broken pavement, some debris already in this layer, then a second layer with a dome ring, uh, this base for the projectors, and lamps and the surface for the bridge, the street posts, debris on the ground, some specific debris and gribble placed just besides the control center to fill up a bit this ground area, the vegetation, the projectors also are, are part of this roads, that's where they are more, more useful to keep, and then a kit of debris uh, that you've seen in the previous layers. Then let's look at a big one, a big scene, the east facades. And this is also an interesting one to just have it render in the viewport. You can see that I this is just a modeling and texture testing uh, setup, but there is still generally there is not a camera in these scenes because I wouldn't render anything from these scenes. But there is two environments. I would generally only test using uh, viewport render interactive viewport rendering cycles, but with two environments. One was a soft diffuse environment that would show me the textures as they look in a situation where the diffuse is very strong and there's little specular or more properly glossy, I'm talking about cycles. And the other one, Arch Glossy, is a stronger, much more contrasted setup with stronger Glossy. Now then, in time, I tried to tweak and make this one to be a balance of both. But yeah, the idea is what, was that I don't know which the, what the light setup is. I shouldn't try to make the perfect light setup, but I have to test in and make my materials and my models so that they work in the broadest situation possible. Okay, then we can stop the render and look at the single layers. You can see in the first layers some backgrounds, very simple parts for the, flo um, the floors and the roofs. Second layers, the main pieces of the facades that were done individually and then for simplicity at some point they were all joined in a single mesh so I could work on the UVs and this, yeah, this is one of the few objects that have a full unwrap and paint and we'll talk about the modeling and texturing more in detail, this is just an overview of what stuff is. Then one layer only for the bricks, those individual bricks that help the silhouette while the, all the inside bricks are made by a texture. Then a layer with all the windows, and you can see that a lot of these windows, even when they are slightly different, they are the same exact mesh linked and then deformed by a lattice that was in one of the previous layers I think or in one of the following there's a lattice that controls the deformation of the whole facades and that was added at some point during the work of initially it was deformed manually but then it was a really good idea to add a lattice because that makes it way more reasonable to handle. 
then in this case there's no grouping and subgrouping. All this its facades they directly go into a single group because you cannot reuse any of these pieces into uh, individually or move them around. They are meant to be where they are in the dome. And this is, I guess, the last layer of yeah of custom meshes. Then after this, it's all gribble that come from other files like this concrete pillars. And yeah, the last is um, lattice. And you can see here it's all the gribble that comes from the gribble scene as dupli object. And then you might have noticed that the this group has low suffix and high suffix because for really complex scenes the two levels were made where low is just the base stuff that would help an animator see the silhouettes and what's going on in the scene and the high level is for rendering the low level is as i built it it wasn't meant for quick rendering because it actually will miss some important parts but it helps for previewing working in the viewport and setting up scenes which is is a major, major concern i mean i've been working with this file with everything turned on at splitting into scenes but with all the details always turned on into viewport and that's fine for me working on the environments it's not fine for someone working with uh, Robo2 and doing the animation and maybe working on physics simulation, that's a whole different story. Then let's look at the scene for the dome gate. Uh, again, I'm trying not to get lost in the actual details of the modeling and texturing and everything, but just to give an overview of the organization. And this is interesting because you can see there's one layer in the first five with the six gates and then stuff in the second five layers that's because there's five copies of s identical gates that are background for the dome and then one that is the one leading to the church where there's actually stuff going on inside there's and this has some of the same pieces of the other ones and some different things so here i place some dupli group of the closed gate and actually there's five of them. Then a dupli group for the open gate with the high and low versions. And in this other layers, you can see the frame for the gate, some details for the inside that are only used for the one that we can actually see the inside. There's also this walkway is only for the open one and the gribble that is only used in the front, the inner part towards the inside of the dome is used in all six gates and the outside is only necessary for the one that leads to the church where we can see the outside of the gate. Uh, then it's instanced. And the cap is model one in position and then used closed for the closed gates and placed beside the open gate inside the church. The last scene is uh, an important one, the dome shell, that is the very structure of the dome. First layer, there's the external layer of the dome shell, which is just a um, geodesic dome. Then we have the base ring with these objects, dupli groups. And here in the first of the second group of layers, there's this actual meshes for those pieces. Then the intermediate layer, that is that was an interesting part, a nice challenge to get the concept art by David Revoir into a detailed architecture, keeping the same graphic impact of those shapes and patterns. And then the inner layer is the panels, where you can see them. They have been placed, simple geodesic dome mesh, using particle system to do basically the same as duplivert, but I always find it easier to place uh, using the particle system to orient the single panels. And then they were applied, so they are now instances, and the um, 
shell, the just the construction object has been removed. But you can still edit them, meaning that you go to this layer and you find the 16 variants of the dome panels with some different damage and some different accessories that are then instanced around. Then this layer just has some connectors for this grid between the panels and the construction layers. This is a low detail version of the panels for reference. And then in the last layer, one last addition was this uh, stairs that give a much better sense of proportion and the size of the dome. So that's all. I try to keep this video about the organization and give a general overview. In the next videos, I'll try to find the most interesting topics and actual modeling and texturing cases to see in detail. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you soon.